Greetings. So, Diablo 4 is finally out. And I've played about 40 to 50 hours of it since June 1st. I am very happy with the game. And it's worth it to create some content which will help new players or inexperienced players to understand how the game functions. So in this video, I will talk about the basics of Diablo 4 and what it takes to build a strong character. I've unlocked a Torment difficulty last night solo. Um, it was a very special experience and a unique experience because um, you know you can only do it once, right? To for the first time, um, there are four difficulties in uh, Diablo Four, and what I wanted to do is to test my understanding of the fundamentals, and it turns out, you know, I'm able to do it pretty well because. Torment 4 is recommended for players that are level 70. I am level 63 and I was able to um, pass the test. There's a dungeon which is called the Pinnacle Dungeon or something like that. Or, or um, let, me, let me check this real quick. It is called the Capstone, Capstone Dungeon in each uh, of the difficulties from... Um, veteran to nightmare right there is one in uh veteran which is called the cathedral of light um and the one in uh nightmare is called fallen temple right and once you beat it once you complete it successfully uh, you're able to access torment so what does it take to build a character? A character that is able to progress through the game without too much difficulty. Now, that being said, uh, I was underleveled and a little bit undergeared. And because, you know, I've played the beta and understand the game a little bit, um, I was able to design and plan what I want to do. And it, it turns out that it's successful. So hopefully this little guide um, is going to be helpful to anybody who watches it. So what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about the synergy between items. Then I'm going to talk about defensive attributes, offensive attributes, mobility, and paragon board, right? Um, because in order to build a character, um, you need to understand some of the facets, right? I'll step aside from the main topics here and there but it's all related um and hopefully you enjoy it so step one uh if you don't know anything about diablo 4 and you don't play any rpgs tip number one would be um to get your tutorial right um going so step one and even though, you know, I'm experienced in video games, I still played with the tutorial to make sure that I understand the facets of the game, right? And every single part of it that I don't know gets revealed to me, so I put it, put it into my own little mental model, right? So enable your tutorials. They are helpful. Secondly, which is really important, advanced tooltips for comparison of items. Very good. Advanced tooltip for information is crucial for building your character. Why? Because with advanced tooltips, you will understand the mechanics of the game and the mathematics behind how is it that you build your defenses, your offenses, and your mobility. What does it take, right? And whether you're going to get through uh, breakpoints, right? Step number one uh, is basically to, to do this, to make sure that you get the information that you need. Um, and um, 
yeah, let's begin. So defenses, right? Why is, is it that defenses are important? And bottom line is when your character is dead, you can't do any damage and you can't really progress. So the key is to stay alive, right? How do you stay alive? In Diablo 4, um, there are several attributes which your character has. Um, the main one is your life pool, right? Your life total. Um, and when it comes down to building defenses, one of the important pieces, right, is to get your um, maximum life increased right let's see where is that mega ring that i have there it is right when you find items one of the important uh, attributes is maximum life right the more of it you have the tougher you will be right so do this right then secondly and the aspect that relates to all the three facets that i talked about Whenever you find a multiplier, multiplier is always good. In this case, when I say always, I mean when it, you know, for, for the benefit, benefit of what you're doing, right? So uh, usage of gems in your items is really important. Rubies add percentage to your maximum life, right? So I have them in my pants then in the torso and in the helmet right your gems if i recall correctly they start with uh two percent i think and then as you increase in tier they go up to you know have however many currently i am at the tier that gives three and a half percent maximum life there are a total of five um life percentage gems and so three and a half times five is what uh, 17 and a half, I think, total, right? Um, so that's a, that's a big chunk of life uh, on the character. If um, we look at the character sheet, right? Um, and we scroll all the way up, right? We can take a look at our core stats and because of the advanced tooltips, we can read and understand what they do. I'm not going to stop on them too much. What I'm saying is I told previously that enabling advanced tooltips is important. If you read what each one of these does, you will understand um, the mechanics of the game, which is why you know there's no need for me to talk about it you can do it on your own if you enable the advanced tooltips and that's the point of this video right is so, so that you can do this on your own and you can build the puzzle that is diablo 4 without asking questions of other people so that you feel that sense of satisfaction and that dopamine rush when you get it right and when your character is strong enough so maximum life right it says here that we have um, 1,865 base life at level 63 and 997 is bonus from other sources, which means that about 30% of our life points is coming in from items, which are, uh, you know, as, as an example, which is this ring and these gems, all of that gets combined into the total life pool. Um, second aspect of defense that is important, it's resistances, right? Resistances and my recommendation is to put um, diamonds in your jewelry, right? In fact, you should read what each gem does and assign it appropriately, right? For the simplicity of it, right? If you put 
uh, the highest level diamond that you can in your jewelry right now. I get 21% all resistance um, just from jewelry alone. And that is really important. Um, it, it's, it helps you survive a great deal. Uh, furthermore, armor. Having an armor on the stat, uh, on an item, is um, similar to resistances, right? Don't ignore it. It's a really useful attribute on your items. Um, next, offenses, right? When it comes to your offenses, the starting point is your weapon, right? The damage that you deal is based off of the DPS on the weapon that you wield. And while it is important not to waste attributes on your items if you want to be efficient, this particular weapon is the one that I found many levels ago and I haven't found a weapon with a higher DPS ever since. And I also got lucky and rolled uh, my main attribute, which is intelligence for the sorcerer. Um, and I just decided, you know, I'll play with this particular weapon. So it, it's been okay. It's been good. Um, so your damage is based off of the DPS of the weapon. Secondly, what is important important to realize is that in Diablo 4 um, powers from your items is what um, is essential to your build so in case of um, my current build right uh, this property that is imprinted on the weapon, right? It was a rare weapon and now I imprinted it with this property. Even though it's the lowest roll possible, the property uh, is essential to the crackling energy build that I have to work well. So if you find an item which does something useful for your build, incorporated into into the item slot it doesn't have to be the highest roll possible it just needs to be useful right if it's useful then you'll be okay um what you should try to do is to combine um your offensive attributes on items or offensive properties on items that will synergize between each other and synergy the way i define it for diablo 4 at least is um cooperation between your attributes skills and items cooperation between your attributes skills and items which means if you want to have a solid character, you should not waste your properties, right? You should not waste your attributes. You should not waste uh, the properties on the items and the skills. So if you put on something useless, um, you're not as strong as you could be. As an example, right? what i will be transitioning into later right when i find a higher tier weapon i will probably imprint this property on the weapon right i could still do the unstable currents that's fine um, it will be just as uh, just as strong you know from from the aspects um let's see where is it do i have it here no i don't um unstable currents Ah, actually, there it is. Uh, I'll take out this unstable current property, which is a higher roll, and then I will imprint it on a weapon which will be sac uh, ancestral, right? Um, this particular weapon, as you can tell, it's called sacred, right? Sacred tier, which is 
uh, kind of a yellow hueish up top, and the ancestral is a little bit more animated, and it's kind of a silver um, or white um, animation up top. It's a higher tier of higher tier of item. So what I'll do is I'll combine uh, this property, right, unstable currents with this property on the torso. Currently, my torso has um, becoming injured while crowd control grants you unstoppable for four seconds, right? And while this is useful in terms of offenses, this particular item would be stronger. Uh, I'm not wearing it now because... Um, it's not going to be as impactful as when I find a higher tiered weapon, right? I'm simply getting ready. Um, so, again, when you find your legendaries or your uniques, consider this. Does this item fit my build, right? And keep in mind uh, the following, right? When you look at the skill tree in Diablo 4, right? Uh, in the case of my character, I'm making a crackling energy build. Um, and I can only pick certain skills if I want to be a fish. I should say I can only. I am choosing to pick only particular skills that work together, right? I am not picking anything out of fire or cold. It's not necessarily that I... Uh, oh, let me back up here. I am not picking offensive skills that don't synergize. I have Flame Shield for defense because this is incredibly strong when it comes to survivability, right? It uh, breaks all the negative effects and makes me immune for a few seconds. It is super strong defensively, right? Um, it actually, without Flame Shield this character just wouldn't work, right? Flame Shield is the reason why this with this Sorcerer build is functioning because I'm able to survive and not die because of it. Um, I'll do a little bit of backtracking here. For uh, defenses, right, as an example, uh, this property, which is uh, something that can be easily found and... It can also be imprinted on an item uh, at the Occultist, right? This skill, which says damaging an elite enemy grants you barrier. If you look at it, um, if it was, uh, you know, a h the highest roll or a very high roll, if you pay attention, right, my total life pool is 2,800. If this property rolled higher, it means that my life pool is essentially doubled up. Just think about it, right? How much tankier uh, you can be, right? And it says that this effect can only happen once every 30 seconds. If you're engaged in a fight with a large crowd of enemies, uh, you can trigger this effect several times. If you're fighting a boss that is tough, you definitely will trigger that several times which means your life total is huge, hugely benefited by this one item, right? So I step back to, to the defensive part, but, you know, that's okay because I'm also talking about synergy and incorporating it uh, into this whole spiel. So offensively, right, you start with a weapon, and then as you build your character, you make sure that you pick the skills that are complementing each other, right? My build is focused on crackling energy because I wanted to build a tanky character that does a lot of chip damage and is very mobile. So that's why I chose my offensive skills in the skill tree and... Um, the items that complement this, right? I hope that makes sense. Um, next step, right? Mobility. Mobility is the completing part of trifecta, which is 
offensive, defensive, and mobility skills uh, that compose a character. When it comes to mobility, um, there is a basic tool which is used by every single character. It's called Evade. As you progress through the game, you will be able to find boots that have extra evade charges on them. And that attribute is very strong, right? Because you can dodge an attack, negate the damage, position yourself properly, and then unleash an attack and cause a lot of damage, right? Um, I haven't tested what's better a uh, cooldown reduction on evade or more charges at this point in time i prefer to have more mobility charges right uh, more evade charges um on on the item so that i can kind of juke and dodge attacks from the enemies it's really helpful especially in boss fights um secondly uh this skill right here teleport is uh, basic sorcerer skill and something to note is that I have not invested a point into teleport it comes from an item right at the start of the game I invested the point because I had to do it it wasn't available on the boots or at least I didn't find them right now they just come from this pair of boots and this is what uh, allows me to kind of come in, use unstable currents, and then my core skills do the damage and then teleport and move around. So I come in, do damage with crackling energy, and then uh, use that defensive barrier and teleport to maneuver around my enemies. Uh, this is what basically allows this character to exist in the state that it's in. Um, because even if I'm taking a lot of damage, right, I am under leveled severely uh, when it comes to torment. But because I can gather the crackling energy and move around, I'm able to to basically deal with um, with the crowds. And I will have a video specifically about my build. But fundamentally, what I'm saying is when you make your build whichever class you choose right it doesn't matter which one you pick make sure that you can survive with your defensive skills and items uh, make sure that you can dash out at, l at least some amount of damage right and then be mobile to dodge the enemy attacks right it's really important to have that on your as a part of your skill set um, so then the final piece right is the paragon board paragon board in diablo 4 is one of the best puzzles that i've seen so far so Paragon board in Diablo 4 is comprised of nodes that give you certain benefits, right? For example, this right here um, gives 2% maximum life. And you can recall what I've talked about when it comes to defenses and how important it is. So one point of Paragon uh, can be quite impactful. And... Um, in the case of my build, right, when, or a, let me back up here a second. When you start, every character has the same basic board, this one, right? And then when you exit it through the board, at, uh, board attachment gate, right, then you choose the next board, which determines your build. So... When I say determines your build, you should think about who do you want to become, what kind of character you want to be before you actually, you know, build it, right? And then you can choose um, a paragon board for your, uh, for your character that complements it best. And you can have, if I recall correctly, 
up to up to six boards i think now in the case of my character as i said crackling energy is what i chose as my skill but it was not because of this paragon board i simply got lucky um when it comes down to this legendary node be available right i didn't research the game in depth enough um to know that it was there but when i saw this i went okay that's exactly what i want and then um there are nodes rare nodes that complement crackling energy even more like this one right um galvanic catalyst the basic one says plus some amount from crackling energy and then the magic nodes around it also add to crackling energy damage so what this is doing is it's multiplying my offensive ability right um an important note about the paragon board right it's an in-depth system and you should be frugal with it you should not waste your paragon points it will be a major mistake to waste paragon points because it will be the difference between you getting to the node and filling out the nodes that are build defining and not being able to do it for example you see this node right here um it says requirement for the additional bonus is to have 270 dexterity right if you take a look at um this pair of boots right that i found it says it gives you plus 34 dexterity if i take it off whoops pardon i pressed um press the wrong button p for paragon right if i take it off now i only have 253 dexterity which means that bonus is not applied and that's why i stressed earlier and by the way that's the reward for you staying with the video if you have so for so long if you do not waste your attributes you're going to reap a large amount of benefit right it's important to be efficient because the points the skill points and attribute points they're quite tight in diablo 4 when i say they're tight i mean if you don't have the attributes that are needed you're gonna lose a lot on either defense or offense right you can lose like a quarter maybe of your overall capability offensive or defensive in terms of paragon if you don't have the right amount of attributes um and what i needed to do before was to have th these two paragon points put in uh and this uh normal node right it was needed in order for this to be active with a different pair of boots i don't have it in my inventory now but i did have another pair and oh actually yeah that's <laughs> let me um, put that up there right i took off the the boots and now the, the teleport is not available well now i'm gonna put it back on right so because i have enough of dexterity i can take this off and now i have two paragon points that i can use in order to advance to the next um the next node right and get even more power and the way that you play with the paragon board the way i recommend that you do this right um at the very start you don't worry too much about it that being said um 
I strongly recommend that you unlock all of the renown. It is a palpable amount of benefit, right? The first three um, parts, which give you the, the first and the, and the third one, right? Give you extra skill point. This is really important for your character and for your build. They're relatively easy to unlock, right? Every region needs 2000 renown points in order to unlock all of the renown benefits. And there are five regions. So you get 20 Paragon points if you unlock it. 20 Paragon points is huge when it comes down to um, when it comes down to just starting up, right, and progressing through the areas of the game. I'm level 63, which means I have a total of uh, 63 times 4, because there are 4 per level. Oh, I'm sorry, 13 times 4 is um, 52. There are also two Lilith altars that give Paragon points. I think there are two, right? So 13... Actually, that would be 12, because this is not completely filled, right? So, 12 times 4 is 48, plus 2 is 50, plus another 2 from Lilith Altar is 52, right? 52 points in this Paragon board. And then 20 more are added from the Renown. And what that means is that if I did not complete that renown, I would not have the ceaseless conduit available, which is the crux of my build, right? And it, again, I'm emphasizing that you shouldn't worry about it, but once you get the core of your build going and then you progress your Paragon board, you will go beyond the torment difficulty because there's a lot more beyond it right so again i strongly recommend um unlocking all of the renown in all of the regions which is a huge power booster secondly um oh come on when you use your Paragon points, make sure that your bonuses are active on the nodes. So on this node, I don't have enough willpower, which means I will see if I can fit more willpower on somewhere else. Although it's not really this four resistance to all element. It's not that important now, besides I'll get more items which will allow it to fill up kind of naturally, right? This node, right, it requires 280 dexterity, which I already have. So I can just go toward the hunter killer. And then after I fill out the hunter killer node, um, I'm going to go out of this gate and attach another board. And lastly, what I'll say is that when you pass on the Paragon board toward the node that you want to activate, look at the rare nodes, look at the legendary nodes, and ensure that when you pick the path, that the nodes you are picking complement what you want to build. Because I could have gone in a different direction, and if I did not pick up enough dexterity, this would not be active. If I made that mistake and I, if I didn't do this step, um, or, hang on a minute. Oh yeah, actually, now that I'm looking at it, um, the <laughs> yeah, I forgot. So I actually cannot take away these two points because if I do, then um, 
this glyph will not be active. Yeah, that's well. There you go. Um, I forgot about this part, and I made a I made a mistake. But th there it is, right? Uh, glyphs, which are basically nodes that where you insert, um, well, a special rune, if you will, of of sorts. And well, it, it it's called a glyph, right? It's not called a rune. A glyph is only active if it meets a requirement from the nodes around it. So in the current configuration of this glyph, because it's, uh, what level is this? Three. It levels up at level 15. The radius will expand. And I think this node will also be, you know, available. And after that's available, I will be able to take away these two paragon points and then use it to advance in a different um, Paragon board. So as you can tell from what I just shared over these several minutes, Paragon boards are interesting puzzle pieces and they add depth to Diablo 4, which is um, so good, right? I am looking forward to building a strong character with every single class and I hope that this little video about you know building characters and what it means and this you know amount of time that I've spent that's just the fundamentals of how Diablo 4 works uh, it's a really really put together uh, well put together game um, so yeah, if you find this valuable, please, uh, click a like, uh, on the video, help the YouTube algorithm. Um, and then maybe, you know, more people will watch it and also gain this benefit. Uh, if you want to support me, you can click the subscribe button and, uh, you can watch me on Twitch. I stream there. And if you want to play with me in a party, you just show up and ask me and then we'll make an arrangement and, uh, you know, we'll play together and I'll help you out. You know, I'll help you build your character. I'll help you analyze the mistake, uh, mistakes that you may or may not have done. And if you're struggling with something, I'll assist you. So, yeah. Uh, this is the basics of what it means to put together a relatively strong character. Good luck to all of you, uh, Heroes of Sanctuary. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and have fun.